Hi everyone, welcome to June's Image Critique. This is pretty cool. Um, it feels actually like it's been a lot longer than a month since we've done the, long, the last one. Oh yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. So Friday morning here in, in Brisbane, it was chilly this morning coming into work, so I'm all rugged up in my jumper. Let me know where you're watching from. It's probably not... Um, good morning, I can see someone's already on there. That is Sue Pollard. Hi Sue. Alrighty, let me know where you're watching from. Garrett is on the other side of that camera. I, if you see me look off to the side, it's because I've got a TV screen and I can see your comments come up. But yeah, if this is your first time watching an image critique, what I do is I, I bring all of the images into Photoshop and I use my, my little Wacom pen over here and, and I use that to sort of draw over the images to talk a little bit about lighting, composition, posing, editing, all of those things, just to make it a little bit more visually um, easier for people to understand what I'm talking about. But when it comes to the image critiques, obviously I can't be in the group 24 seven and often with the time, time zone difference, it's a little hard to see everything that is shared from all of our members all over the world. So I do this once a month so that I can offer some feedback. And even if you haven't submitted a photograph, this image critique, and, and I do it every single month and have been for 18 months, I suppose, we've been doing this every month. So there's a lot of previously recorded image critiques already in the group. And all you have to do is use a search bar, you can type in image critique and it'll bring up um, all of the previous ones that we've done before. You can also find them on my YouTube channel as well. So you just go to YouTube and type in Kelly Brown, you'll find me there. But the whole point of this exercise is to learn and to see your image or other images through someone else's eyes. So I've been doing this, not just here in the group, but I've been doing this a long time and what I've also learned over the years is, as, as from being a judge in photography competitions is a lot of ways to give feedback, I suppose, and how to look for different things that could potentially improve or benefit a photograph moving forward. Um, it is always a little tough putting your photograph up to be critiqued because, you know, what we often think is, is perfect or in our own eyes, we're, when we're looking at our own photos might not necessarily be what someone else sees. And it can also work in the reverse as well. Sometimes we look at our photographs and we know that we're missing something. We know that we we didn't quite get it the way that we wanted to, but we're not quite sure where it is that we've sort of, you know, um, not, you know, not been able to really apply all of the techniques that we, we should know as photographers. And the whole part that I love about image critiques and, and doing this is just watching everybody grow and take the advice on board moving forward because, um, and I say it all the time, there is a saying, we're only as good as our last shot. And that's how we grow, that's how we evolve. I look at my photographs that I take today and I know that when I look back at them in another year or two, I'm gonna go, oh gosh, what was I thinking? Oh, I could have done that better. So we don't, it doesn't matter how experienced you are or where you are in your journey or how long you've been doing this, you are going to continually grow from every single shoot that you do. And I don't think you ever stop. And I hope I never stop learning and growing. And I learn so much from, from doing this as well and seeing other people's work. Now, usually I do 20 images, but it does take quite a long time. Some of my critiques have lasted two hours. So I have cut it down to 10 images. And yesterday, I think we received 10, the first 10 that were uploaded were in less than two minutes, which was insane. <laughs> <laughs> so again, I apologize if you didn't quite get your image through. It is a pretty quick thing and it's, it's like, the lotto, you've just got to be on the internet at the right time when that link is shared to get that photo, to get your photo uploaded. And obviously with having such an international group, it's hard to make it available for everyone, you know, wherever you live. So yeah, with enough rambling, I'm gonna get started. We've got lots of people watching. We've got Manila, Sweden. Hi everyone. This is fantastic. Now, I can't exactly see who is on. Um, it's chilly in Perth, someone said. Garrett's just scrolled through the, the comments there. It says Facebook user, so I, I can't see who's actually leaving the comments, but I can uh, definitely read those. Alrighty, let's do this. Okay, first image is up. All right. 
this image has got so much impact. When I opened it, you know, five minutes before going live, it was like, wow, look at that expression. And the, the connection that the photographer has with the, the little boy or the little girl is just amazing. Like that connection with the eye is just stunning. I do love a good black and white and um, and looking at this I can see lots of beautiful highlights I can see lots of beautiful rich dark shadows and and that's and, and it's you know it's a really punchy black and white I absolutely love that the um, the sharpness is is amazing I love the crop I love that you know his his eyes uh, that bullseye composition it's like smack bang in the middle of that frame it's really really engaging there's a couple of little things that i'm going to kind of point out here but uh, i mean from looking at this it's it's just a really beautiful portrait so when i do come in obviously i'm not looking at a full res image here like we always ask everyone to submit their photos two megabytes um, or less so when i do zoom in obviously you're going to see some pixels because of the file size but just having a little look here around the hairline it seems to be a little bit of a um, sort of like a haloing effect going on here so what happens is when we're often editing and we're pushing our highlights and our shadows and we're working in the background to kind of bring our subject forward we can sometimes miss a little some of these little things so you can see just around the outside here I'll make my brush a bit smaller um, you know there's just some sort of lighter areas around the hair there so you can darken those down and you won't have those sort of little distracting um, lighter areas and then also when we look at, at an image like this what I'm going to do is just open up um, our hue and saturation so I'm just going to push the saturation here and you can see that there's a lot of different sort of red and magenta tones in in the image so when you're working with a black and white you know just make sure you really pull those those other tones in in the image be careful that you're not going to have any color shifts throughout the the photo so now when I kind of have a little look you can see before and after and it's just got that slight magenta tone to it so always ha always have a look when you're making a beautiful strong black and black and white portrait like this have a look at those color shifts um, by just playing with those sliders the other little thing that I'm gonna have a look at here in is um, the the detail in those blacks so obviously a histogram here, it's not hitting obviously either end of that histogram. I'm gonna hold the option key in here and just move. So you can see there's the highlights in the eyes there. So we've got lots of detail, which is great. But when we come down here to the shadows, you can sort of start to see where we're, we're gonna lose some detail there in the shadows. And it just seems to be around the chin there underneath that chin and towards the back of the hair so if we were to print this photograph um, depending on the paper obviously that you're going to print this on you want to be able to see all of the detail so we can see up here lots of detail in the hair just be careful when you are you know pushing pushing the contrast in your image that you don't start to lose detail in in all areas um, of that print Otherwise, it'll just start to print sort of black blobs. And you can kind of see just down here where it's getting into some of those darker shadowy areas. See these little lines in here? Just a little bit of banding going on there where it's going from, you know, those mid-tones down into those dark shadows. So that's um, when you're editing your file, you know, make sure that you um, are coming in and having a look at all of those those different things to kind of help preserve the integrity of that information and the quality um, of your image will show in print every single time. But this is such a, a strong, striking portrait. I absolutely adore it. If that was a photo of my child, I would absolutely love it. Great job. All right. Oh. This baby is very, very sweet. I love how relaxed and comfortable it is. You know, looking around here, you know, the baby is the main, the main subject. My eye is drawn into the baby. It looks um, comfortable. Everything has been placed with, you know, um, a lot of um, care and, and attention. There just seems to be a little bit too much going on up 
the top of the image here. And what I kind of mean is we've got lots of sort of stuff going on up and around here, but down the bottom here, it's all baby. So sometimes we, we love to add a lot of different elements, but I always add and then I'll have a look at it and go, do I need it? Is it necessary? Is it adding to the composition or is it slightly distracting? So if I was adding sort of things like this, I'd want it to kind of continue around the outside to frame the, the bed or the subject. Um, but the blanket comes across and the blanket's actually um, quite a sort of a strong point in visually in the image because it's so large and it kind of continues on and it's got little tassels and things like that. So it would either be one or the other. And when we start to look at all the different textures that are going on here, even though it's a very, you know, um, softly muted in, in color tone and the way that it's been put together, there's still a lot of textures. So you've got your bed, you've got the, the little pillowy blanket thing underneath the baby, you've got texture down here, you've got texture in the flowers, you've got texture in the blanket, you've got texture in the headband. So there's a lot going on here, even though it is, um, you know, all within the same sort of color palette. So sometimes less is more. And the one thing that I keep drawing my eye to is this little tassel coming out down the bottom here. Uh, I know that the whites kind of help blend in with the flowers up here, but yet the, the flooring, the bed, all of the fabrics are all in the same color tone. So white may have just been that little bit too strong a choice in terms of the contrast and how it's going to stand out. Possibly um, some more soft pink tones would have, would have really helped that and, and helped sort of blend it in because um, it's just sort of fighting for, it, for attention there. But other than that, I mean, it's, it's lovely. I can see like a lot of care and detail has been put into this. Um, just be careful that sometimes too much is, is too much. Um, looking at the little one's gorgeous face, the, the magenta tones in the skin um, probably could have been warmed up just a little bit. You can sort of see like there's um, a little bit of blue sort of tones coming in and around the, the baby's face there, sort of bleeding into the, the background just there. And you can have a look at this file on your screen. But yeah, that's probably it. Um, composition, just be careful when you're working with such a strong sort of element like this. Um, it's not quite centered. Baby's lovely and centered, but the bed's not quite centered within the, the frame in terms of the distance from there to there and there to there. So just kind of shifting that over a little bit, having a look at the crop. But otherwise, um, yeah, that's about all I've really got to say. Good job though, I love that bed. Okay. The wrapping here is done really, really well. I'm looking at all the different colors and everything and it's kind of like the last image. When we think about, you know, when is there too many things going on in a photograph? The baby looks so comfortable. The wrapping is beautiful. I love the, the little love heart in the hand. The hands look really relaxed. It's just that there's so much else going on around the baby that I'm not quite sure that it's needed. So you've got sort of like an outdoory kind of theme going on in the background with the flowers and I'm assuming they're like little pine cones more over here and more sort of bushy things over there with the green. But up here in the baby, it's, you know, the colors are rich and they're vibrant, but it doesn't sort of, can, it doesn't, match the foreground, the background is what I'm trying to say. You've got sort of a very an, um, native kind of background and then in the foreground, there's not really a lot there. So, in, uh, you know, you could have had, if you're gonna have flowers in the background, have the baby hold a flower. Do you know what I mean? So you connect the background with the, the foreground, um, the subject to all of the different elements that you're going there because there's no real reason why those elements are there. Whenever we add something to a photograph, it has to help tell a story. It has to help, um, you know, add to the composition and connect the subject to it. But at the moment, there's no real connection. And even though there's little flowers here, they're very different to the flowers that are in the background and those pine cones. So 
think about it in that sense. I, you know, I don't mind the, the composition um, in terms of placing all of those things there, but I would have probably, if you're going to use it, because it's a very pretty background, I even love the little hazy light coming through the side there at the top, but it just doesn't help tell the story in terms of why you've got a lot of greens and natives and then up here you've got purples and oranges. So you've got a really sort of bright, colorful, vibrant foreground in terms of your subject and a very sort of muted native um, background. I'm gonna, I'll stop talking about the background now because <laughs> I've said it in a few different ways. Um, and like I said, I love the wrapping and I love this um, color combination here with the orange and the purple. You know, I, I think that that's really kind of lovely. One thing is though, that the little headband just doesn't quite match that color tone. This is a very vibrant orange, so it's very different to this um, more rusty sort of orange down here. You can change the color of that very, very easy. Um, you can use my color change action. You can use a brush and change it to color mode and, and mute that down, but it probably wouldn't have been necessary to add that either. So sometimes taking it away, get the shot and then have a look at it again. The other thing that I do want to sort of have a, um, a look at here is the the crop so the baby's kind of leaning off over this way now for me I probably would have had the baby further over here in that position and then had the face going in that direction to lead you into that negative space so at the moment the baby's face is kind of coming down and looking over here but it leads you to a dead end and a dark end um, so when you think about the way that you rotate your camera, the way that you position the baby's head, all of those things, um, think about how they, they help add to the, the way that you draw uh, the viewer's eye through the image and around the image in terms of your composition. So obviously the baby, you know, in terms of our, our rule of thirds, we've got the baby's head there in the center at the top, which is great but the body kind of doesn't really do anything. And you've got some leading lines that take you out of the frame, very strong lines, and another one up here that's taking you up and out of the frame. So sometimes rotating um, the camera the opposite way will help add to this in terms of composition. If we have a little look here, we can, I'm just gonna flip it. So, in terms of how I'm trying to explain having that face come back and lead you into that composition could change um, a lot to the image and and the way that you balance it so you come through and you look and it continues to, to bring your eye around the frame the um, the other thing is rotating it this way So the baby was on, on more of that angle will help as well in terms of the way that then your eye then comes through the frame. So, so that it doesn't look so awkward, I suppose, in terms of composition. But yeah, um, I do love the color choice that you've used here. Just continue to kind of play and look at how the, the background elements really add to it. One other little thing is when you are um, retouching the baby's skin, always be careful that you're not removing too much detail and texture. Sometimes over softening the skin, um, you can see there, creates a little bit of banding in, in the skin. And then when we sort of sharpen the photograph, what happens is we, we tend to over sharpen it, I suppose, in different areas and it, um, and it results in a little bit of pixelation around the eyes there. You can sort of see that there. A couple of little things to think about, but other than that, great job with the wrapping and the positioning of the baby there in the prop. It looks um, very, very comfortable. Alrighty. Oh, wow. What a beautiful, beautiful pregnant woman. I love this dress. All right, so this is a very, very simple portrait. And, um, you know, she looks, she looks happy, she looks comfortable. Uh, she also looks very strong too, which is something that I love to share when I'm 
photographing you know pregnant women because it's such an empowering empowering thing for a, a woman to you know go through the birth process and and be pregnant and create another life like it's it's an absolute miracle and I do love showing their strength a couple of little things here I'm just having a look at the overall obviously the composition there and I don't mind that that she's slightly off center there um, because it is nice and balanced in terms of you know your um, your framing and everything possibly bringing her into the center a little bit more would have would have just sort of balanced it out um, a little bit but obviously that's up to you it's not a big big no-no but the one thing that I am sort of looking at here is that light so we've got some really bright highlights there on the back of her hand in terms of where that light is coming in and hitting it and then there's another one just there that little white highlight we don't have a lot of light coming across her face which isn't bad but do you know what would have really really helped this um, lowering the intensity of the light here but having something come in and fill the light on the other side just to give you a little bit of highlight you know around the arm there around the back of the body here and um, and then throwing in some highlights up here onto her face the the reason I say that is that when I look at the histogram over here it is a very dark image and we've got some obviously some bright highlights there but let's take it into curves and let's have a little look here at all of this information so you can already see there like just how dark a lot of this file is and there's a little bit of line going down there this is this is the easiest way for me to kind of have a look at um, how images have been created and where all that information is kind of sitting at the moment but yeah her skin tones um, in the arm there are really quite sort of dark you can see that but the the shadow areas all the way down here there's not a lot of detail so it won't print very well um, but when you don't add any light to skin you can create a very muddy effect so when we sort of come in here and we have a little look around um, you know the skin tones are really sort of muddy and and quite um, quite dark there there's also like a, a highlight coming around the edge of the arm there so when we are darkening areas down and playing with them just be careful that you come in and have a look at the edge there but other than that just adjusting the, that light um, if you're going to go with with the sort of a rim lighting effect like this um, I possibly would have had her turned the other way so that the, this side of her would have been on the light and had that hair pulled pulled back so that you could see more of that light hitting the face so you didn't have those muddy skin tones um, and yeah just creating more of a dramatic outline around the entire edge of the body not just in some places because the lighting here is really quite sort of soft and lovely it's just where it's hitting some of the other areas it looks like it's kind of coming in quite low there but um, play with that lighting I did this exact setup in our fine art maternity class with that rim lighting and how to control that light how to go for something really dramatic but I can see that with the you either want to sort of really silhouette and outline the body and the face um, or if you want to keep some detail in the skin and the face but there's no light there you do really need to be able to have some form of reflector or fill light coming in on the other side um, another thing when we are retouching skin and things like that it can be a little hard when they come in if they've got a suntan um, <laughs> not always the easiest to edit but darkening down some of those areas you know can be achieved um, you know just it's it does take a little bit of time uh, dodging and burning that with 50% gray layer even adding very tricky but it can be hard to get it perfect but I've just taken a sample with my paintbrush there just holding in the option key I'm going to come down and I'm going to choose a solid color and then I'm going to multiply it bring back the opacity there and then I'm going to click on that layer mask invert it whoops and 
just paint that on and this is with a hard edge brush without changing it so you can paint that on darken down that area and you can sort of blend it in a little better but yeah that can be a little tricky but you can you can soften some of those highlights by doing things like that um, quick little tip but yeah other than that love the pose I love the the way that her body's flowing just control that light a little more in that editing and um, this um, would be a completely different image quick sip of my coffee everyone loves a little smile mm -hmm. we've got a bit of competition happening here in the um, chat who's furthest away from Australia <laughs> uh, Massachusetts is winning at the moment oh wow <laughs> I love it I love it okay you know I'm really digging these blues and browns these tones are, are really lovely here and we we all love a beautiful smiling baby and um, that little bit of greenery kind of is, is quite pretty as well. So I think you've, you've done an in, incredible job here with the wrapping, the, the composition, the editing even looks great. And I've said this a million times that you might be able to pose, you might be able to put things together really well, but if you get your lighting wrong, it's gonna make or break the photograph. And right now the direction of the light is just coming straight up. Let's change that brush is coming straight up the baby's nose and it's creating some un unflattering um, shadows and highlights there. So when we are looking at the direction of our light, we want to create beautiful, soft, you know, flattering light. And the intensity of your light's great. It's just the direction of it. So right now, if we move over to our little setup over here and baby is somewhat wrapped, similar to the way that the baby's wrapped over there, but the direction of the light is, is coming in this direction. I'm not sure if that makes it easy to see. So what you want is the baby's head to be closest to the light source so that the light falls down across the baby's head. And if it, if it, was, if it was me, then obviously the light needs to come from a 45 degree angle. So right now I'm looking straight onto you. So if the light was over here, it's gonna be coming in at a 90 degree angle towards my face. So bring that light around so it's on a 45 degree angle, have it slightly elevated so that it falls gently across the baby's face in that direction. So with a prop like this, if this was natural light, just rotate the prop. If it's an artificial light, if it's an umbrella like that, you might be able to move that. So always consider the, the, the direction of that light in terms of the shadows on the baby. And what I like to look for are just little gentle shadows coming down here. Which you have right now. So I'm gonna try and oh. zoom in on your face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now it might not be the clearest because we're not high def cameras, but you can see that shadow on Kelly's face. This side, because oh, when I look no. at the TV screen, it's opposite. <laughs> so it's on this side. Yeah. Coming down just gently across, always sort of looking underneath the nose. If the shadow, and if I do it this way. Come back out a bit. So if the shadow is coming up in a line like that, then you know that you've not got your light placed in the right direction. So you've all seen the video of the light going around my face and you watch how the shadows change. It's, it's looking for the shadows to come down in that direction, not go up in that direction, if that makes sense. Alrighty, but yeah, I think you've done an amazing job with the styling, the wrapping, and the baby looks so peaceful, composition's great, baby's head. You know, when we look at the rule of thirds. Um, babies, you know, the, the prop is in the middle of the frame, the baby's head is in those intersecting points there and it just leads you through the image. Just get that light right. Mm. So 
There are many cute babies. Posing fantastic, props in the middle of the, the frame. You know, the baby sort of comes down this little curve. It, it matches the way that the, you know, it's been put into a beautiful um, round bowl. And, you know, the, the posing sort of matches the round shape. Um, that's what I'm always looking for. So when I put, put a baby into something round, I want to make the baby, you know, follow the, the curve, the outside of that, that round prop um, in terms of the way that I pose them. Um, the color toning here is really beautiful. These sort of blue tones are matching throughout the image. The only thing is with the background is that it is slightly distracting. I don't mind it so much, but there's just some really strong lines here that could be, you know, softened down, I suppose. But other than that, the, you know, it, it's really lovely in terms of composition and styling. I think you've done a great job baby looks so comfortable only thing that i'm going to talk about here at the moment um, that i can see is just the skin tones of the baby they're just looking a little pale and a little cool warming them up when we start to remove the red tones in baby's skin sometimes they can start to look a little flat um yeah that'd be great actually so yeah, sometimes just, you know, not removing the skin tones, the red tones, sorry, too much and leaving some of them in there. Um, and, you know, baby's skin is meant to be, you know, nice and pink, but warming it up a little bit more there would really benefit this. Um, you know, when I'm working with a baby that's got very cool skin tones and I prefer warmer images, just me personally, I will use my actions um, and I've got you know, a correct yellow, correct blue um, action there that I often use and I'll just play that and paint that over to kind of help um, make the, the skin tones a little bit more even throughout because the skin tones down here on the legs are just a little bit cooler than what they are sort of up here around that face area. But yeah, they just look a little flat, but that's about it. Um, when we think about light with an image like this where we have the baby kind of deep down inside a, a bowl, just be careful that if the baby's um, face and and sort of upper upper body, if they're um, if they're down a little too low in a prop like this, the light will have a hard time reaching it. So at the moment, what's happened with the way that the baby is positioned inside the prop? Thanks, Garrett. Um, the light's coming across the top here, and you can see where it's hitting. It's hitting here. It's hitting here. Here. And here so the reason it's hitting those areas are that it's they're higher than the, the rest of the baby so these areas over here like the little face and and the belly and and so on they're protected by everything here that's stopping that light coming through unfortunately that just you know creates some uneven lighting in terms of your subject so whenever you pose a baby like this in your bowl, because the intensity of your light's great, the direction of your light's great, now you just have to, to pose the baby in a way so that the light can hit the baby where it needs to hit the baby, if that makes sense. So at the moment, the baby's kind of deep down inside the bowl. When I use something like this, I make sure that the bottom half of the baby is down lower, because it looks quite even here at the moment. So this is obviously at the same height as this it's getting the same amount of light in terms of where it's laying in the prop so if this is your uh actually let's use this oh what do you want can i have a baby i'll find one, I'll find one. do you know where she is she's just down the back there in that um in that box We've been doing a bit of cleaning up in the studio. So yeah, so if this is the baby's head and this is the baby's bottom, at the moment inside the prop, and Garrett's got my baby. Sorry about that. At the moment, this is how she's being posed as that light's coming across. And what we want to do is get that bottom down lower inside the prop so the upper body comes up higher. So the light hits the face where it's supposed to hit the face. So not flat, slightly elevated, so the bottom is lower inside the bowl. And that's gonna make a huge difference with that light coming across and falling evenly on the face. The face should be the brightest part of 
every subject that you photograph, regardless of their age. So get that butt down deeper and get that upper body. So more support here, less support there. And that's it. Sometimes I explain things in a very roundabout way, but I eventually <laughs> get there. I apologize. Depends on how many coffees I've had. <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys are killing me today with this cuteness. Look at this. That is just the most adorable little thing I have ever seen. And he just looks like a grumpy old man holding that thing. That face. Look at his face. <laughs> All right. The, again, the styling, the, the colors, they're just gorgeous. There is a fair bit going on here. I kind of feel that this is kind of taken away a little bit by this. I, wanna, I just want to look at this. And I don't think that this needs to be there. I actually don't understand what the connection is between the cotton and, and the baby. Because uh, the baby's not hasn't got any cotton around it. Um, this is made out of wool, this is made out of wool, and this is made out of wool, and this is wood. So I'm not really sure how cotton adds to this unless, of course, they might own a cotton farm. I don't know. Um, but I wouldn't add something like that to it just because it's pretty. You would use something like this if it adds to the story. So um, if you've used cotton in the different elements elsewhere. But yeah, I just feel that the, and the brightness of it really does kind of make it blend in here so there's not a lot of separation in some of the areas um, as well. But this is the, the cutest thing I've ever seen. So I don't want my eye to be taken away by all of the bits and pieces going on in the background. Um, the other thing is we've got a fair bit of space sort of going on over here. In, in terms of information, and then the, the prop just hits the edge of the frame down the bottom here. So I would have either had it cropped in tighter, or I would have had it in terms of getting rid of some of this information up here, and I'll just sort of show you. So kind of evening it out just a little bit there, um, and getting rid of some of that information in that top corner would really benefit this. Yeah, that's pretty much it though. Like you've got a very dark side to the photograph over here. Like that's really kind of dark in terms of information. There's some sort of blocked up shadows down here that are a little muddy, but then the light that's falling, you know, on this side over here is probably just a little too off balanced in terms of contrast and distracting elements in the background there. The um, the wrapping is beautiful. The hand placement is beautiful. I just, I adore all of this. Um, and I love the entire color palette. I think it's beautiful, but I probably would have um, got rid of that. And, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, this is going to be really kind of a very quick dodgy way of showing you, but when you remove distracting elements and my brush has got a hard edge at the moment because of me using a red red pen so when you remove distracting elements like that you bring the subject forward you make it the main part of this image and the rest it just doesn't need to be there um, if you got rid of the the what do you call it? The cotton. cotton altogether. Just to show you, baby main subject. So sometimes we love to use things like that to style, but sometimes less is more. This is the cutest thing I've ever seen. Um, I just think it's gorgeous. All right. I don't think I've got anything else there. Maybe just a little bit of redness in the hands. Um, could be evened out in terms of tonality to the face. The face is beautiful skin tones. Uh, you know, they're just gorgeous. Um, and maybe just warming up those hands to match the, the little face. But that, that's just me being picky. But yeah, great job. Alrighty. Oh. Look at that.
<laughs> Again, lovely styling. The, the baby looks super relaxed, super comfortable. Um, and you know, this is sort of, for me, I'm looking at it in terms of pose and it's kind of a combination of the chin on hands pose and the bum up pose. Um, so if, if you shot it from the other angle, let me just change my brush. So if you were over here shooting this way and you brought that chin and those elbows up, you've got your chin on hands pose, come around to the side, tuck in the, that bum a little more and you've got your bum up pose. So it's a, it's a lovely combination of both when you think about it. And the baby looks really comfortable, it looks very peaceful. The only thing um, at the moment that I'm kind of looking at here is just the brightest part of the image is the top of this hat. Uh, you can tone that down. I know sometimes it's it's a lighter tone than the skin, so it is going to be lighter with the direction of that light coming across. So you can darken it down a little bit in post-production, um, which will help sort of remove the, the brightness of it. It's just that it's so bright compared to this really dark background. So possibly not having such a dark vignette around the edge of this frame would have would help that as well in terms of the contrast. But, um, but it is absolutely lovely. You've got these beautiful blue tones that go with the, the blue um, bodysuit. It's just lovely. Uh, if I was gonna be really picky here in terms of attention to detail, just this little tie right here, because it doesn't, you don't see the entire tie, I would just push that back through and hide it behind the, the little bonnet here. Um, but that's about it. The other thing, when we're posing the hand underneath the thing, underneath a, a baby's cheek, I'm just gonna have a sip of my coffee. When we are posing the baby's hand, what I always try to do is, is look at the shape of the wrist. So when we have the, I'll do it with me instead of this baby. When you have the hand coming in underneath, you can tend to lose the fingers. And at the moment we can't really see we can see the little finger, but then we miss the top of the little finger. So it's kind of really hiding in underneath there. So what I try to do is bend the wrist in to bring the hands out, the fingers out. So this would have been my safe shot. I would have come in and just sort of lifted up the, the baby's head. And what I, mean, I mean is I would have come in like this, got my safe shot, and then just gently lifted the baby's head to bring those fingers out a little more to see them, to sit it underneath that baby's cheek, if that makes sense. All right, so yeah, another easy way to, to darken down that hat. Um, very quickly, we can just multiply that information. I had a layer mask, invert that and paint that on. And obviously you would do that with a softer brush, <laughs> but you can see just by darkening down that um, area, it's taken away a lot of that brightness, which just is a little too contrasty compared to the background. But yeah, skin tones look great too. All right, how are we going? We got any questions? Really good. Um, there was, uh, Chloe just said before, you know, when you, did the crop on the image, how just the smallest crop mm. can make such a big difference Huge, to, yeah. to the, the overall composition. But even what you did there, just lightening that bonnet, just that tiny bit. Yeah, huge. Just brought your focus straight into the baby's face. Small and things. just evens out a lot of contrast. Um, and that's the thing, like, we, we need to try and get as much right as we possibly can in camera. And I know how hard it is in camera when you're photographing a baby because, you know, we might know in theory, lighting, composition, exposure, all of those things. But then the minute you have to throw into the mix a baby that might be really sensitive to touch, might be wriggly, might be unsettled, um, and then you're trying to style and get everything perfect, Sometimes things drift away and we forget about them at the time of the shot, but we must always try to consider all of the different elements at the time of capture to get that exposure as perfect as we possibly can in camera so that we have minimal retouching to do afterwards and you shouldn't have to, to crop a photograph too much in post-production because what happens then is you 
you're eliminating information. You're getting rid of information that um, you know will impact the the file size in terms of print. All right. The um, author of this image has just commented to say, "I'm nowhere near anyone else. Be brutal. Tell me everything." <laughs> Comparing. All like, right. Come on. <laughs> wow, look. Do you know, we are our own worst enemy when it comes to critiquing our own work. You know, we find flaws with everything. So the thing is, you've just got to be okay with, do you know what? You did your best at the time. Learn from every experience, every shoot, and move forward. And that's what it's about. At the beginning of this, I said, you know, we never stop learning. It doesn't matter how experienced you are. Just always be prepared to have an open mind when you look at your work to go, right, what didn't I get right? What can I perfect next time? You know, look at this beautiful baby. What parent isn't going to love a photograph of their baby like this? So great job, honestly. Um, okay, let's have a little look here. You know, I love the styling. The wrap goes really well with the background. The light is a little contrasty in terms of that really dark navy background and how bright the, the baby's skin tones are there. So let's take it into curves just to have a little bit more of a look here at the information. I'm gonna hold in the option key here and let's have a look at some of the highlights here. I'll wait for it to start working. There we go because my computer is plugged in. So you can see there's a little bit of, oh, come on work, there we go. You can see those highlights there on that baby's face where we're just starting to, to overexpose that, those skin tones. So you do need to be very careful there. Um, whether that's a, a post-production thing or in camera, just softening that light a little bit more. And that might be that if you've got, let's go over here to our little lighting setup, um, if you've got the, the lights that are coming down um, towards your subject there, you might just need to feather it a bit more. Just soften it just a tad more so it falls, um, that light is softer when it comes across the baby. And that might just be um, the one thing that you might need to consider there. The, the other thing is um, the direction obviously of that light is is great it's coming obviously down we can see that shadows are, um, are in the right going in the right direction the 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 wrap here at the background um, you can see where that light's sort of falling across there it just sort of looks like a bit of a messy pile so where light does fall across such things like that make sure that they are adding to either the composition in terms of the lines and how you draw your subject, your eye through the frame. So what I mean by that is, let's just say for example, let's get rid of that red line. If you hadn't have cropped this image so tightly, so let's just make it a little smaller here. And let's just say that there's a bit more information going on around the image. So what I mean here is, give me two seconds. Okay, let's just get rid of all of that. So it's basically just the baby, okay? So if you have um, like a bit of a feature going on here with that wrap, how you can use it to benefit the, the composition is have it sort of so you, if you watch the, the line of the baby, so as the baby sort of, um, and let's, as the baby's kind of moving through the frame like this, you would have that wrap continue to move in that same direction. So it flows through the frame, not just kind of piled up over here behind the baby in like a little bit of a mess. So it's just that little bit more attention to detail when you are using wraps and things like that to style. So it adds to, you know, the, the leading lines throughout the frame. You can really use them to your, um, you know, your advantage there. The other, like posing, really great. I mean, look at those little wrinkles there. The, um, the skin tones are lovely and warm. There is just a fair bit of redness coming through there in some of those little areas down here as well. So removing just some of those red tones 
um, throughout the baby's skin. Try not to over process the baby's skin. It does look a little too soft. Like we can see those milk spots, but we have really kind of softened that skin. I'm not quite sure what um, plugin or action that you've used there, but just be careful not to, to overdo it, if that makes sense. Um, so that it doesn't become too smooth, too soft. But yeah, other than that, when it comes to posing um, the baby in this particular setup, I can, you know, the little legs coming through, but we're missing the foot. Um, if you're gonna use a, a wrap like that, maybe have it come over the, the rest of the leg um, so that it doesn't kind of cut off and you can't quite see everything else. If it's covering the nappy, that's great. Um, just maybe tuck it up underneath in here so you can see that little heel and foot, see those little toes in terms of the pose. But yeah, again, getting that little elbow up and that wrist underneath that shoulder and underneath that cheek. Sometimes it can be hard to not get that squished cheek there with the hand, but it's just getting that safe shot and then coming in, giving that cheek a little bit of a tug so it sits um, on top of that hand a bit better and it'll stop the little crooked mouth, but parents love the crooked mouth. I mean, who doesn't? Uh, but yeah, good job. I think you've done a great job. It's just continually perfecting that pose. When it comes to the bum up pose, um, it can be hard with some babies to get that, that butt around to bring that knee and elbow together. So just keep working on that. But other than that, the baby looks comfortable. It looks relaxed and, and you know, the styling in terms of color palette is really lovely as well. Alrighty. So another example here of the, the wrap kind of being up there, but then we've got all of this information down here that's got nothing in it. So using the detail to, to draw you through the image there. Um, I don't think you needed the wrap to be all out there. Like this baby is just gorgeous. The styling of this, the colors of the headband and the wrap and the blanket are beautiful. And I'm a big fan of negative space. Like imagine that not being there and, and this being just baby. Um, like imagine just getting rid of it all together and now you've got all baby um, you don't have that that other thing there that's as big as the baby like when you look at the size of it it's quite a big area of just fabric that's Like, look at the size of that compared to the baby. It's big, it doesn't need, it's not adding to it, it's not doing anything. So, sometimes when we use fabric and wraps and things like that, um, they work and sometimes they don't. Um, but this, this part of the image is perfect. Look at that baby, it's gorgeous, it's, it's relaxed, it's comfortable. It's posed beautifully, it's wrapped beautifully, the headband, um, you know, goes with it, it complements it, the lighting is gorgeous, it just get rid of that and completely different image. And then you've got all that beautiful negative space for text, I mean, you could, you could turn that into a beautiful birth announcement for a family. All right. Other, th like the only little thing that I would pick on is just the the little red tones in the skin just evening those out like removing them possibly just underneath the nose there just there and you know a few little red tones you know around the sort of edges of the hands and and the fingers but that's really pretty much it beautiful job last image look at that hair wow has a lot of hair that's gorgeous I'm a big sucker for hair okay I kind of feel like the baby's upside down the if we flip it and flip it again and then rotate it so camera angles and composition can have a huge impact on your photograph so we've got 
uh, we can't it's kind of like you've got to turn your head to see the baby's face when you look at it from this this angle but when it's the other way you look at it very differently so always remember get yourself in the right position and then remember to move your camera move your body physically to get the best angle that's going to complement your subject at the moment where it's positioned if we bring in our our rule of thirds baby's head intersecting lines up here and then leads you through the bodies the the wrap and the body lead you through to the rest of the frame so that's what I would call a balanced composition um, when we start to look at our composition here we've got a whole heap of information in that top left left hand corner there and our eye naturally reads from left to right so when you place the subject's head in that top um, left hand corner what it does is it allows you to have your eye flow through the rest of the frame so yeah just um, having a look at, at where you position that baby within your frame the thing <laughs> One of the hardest things is, you know, we just think we've got to get that shot and then we'll just see what happens later. So we pick up the camera and we take the, the shot. Sometimes we forget to stop and breathe. When we pick up the camera and we look through the viewfinder, we should be looking at the foreground, the middle ground and the background and everything that's going on within that rectangle. Like it's a rectangle. So the way you capture that information within inside that space um, will impact the overall finished photograph, where you position them in the frame, how you, um, how you style something in terms of the way that your eye should look throughout an image from the, the top uh, left-hand corner to the bottom right-hand corner, how you want the, the person to feel when I look at an image like this. These beautiful, rich green tones with that hair are stunning. Like this is a completely different photograph right now, looking at it from this perspective. Um, you know, the wrap probably needs a little bit of finessing. It probably just needs a little bit, um, uh, probably just a little bit more tension when you're pulling it tight there to, to get it nice and firm around the baby. Obviously we don't want to wrap babies too tight, but getting that nice and, and firm will, will help with this. But other than that, you know, you're onto something here. Um, light probably is just a little bit too intense on the baby's face and on the back of the hand here. So just feathering that light, softening it a bit more. Uh, if you've got natural light, obviously, you know, um, trying to filter it a little more as well could help or moving your subject further away from your light source. Um, there's many different ways that you can soften the the overall impact of that intensity sorry of that light but yeah just keep going the other thing that I'm gonna su suggest here next time with this particular pose is if we let's flatten it so we keep looking at it like this if you bring in some more support there underneath the top of that baby's head so at the moment let's bring my little baby up at the moment with the baby being in this position it's kind of flat so if you were to lift the baby's head with some supports here and then turn the baby's head that way so lifting the baby's head up and then turning it you would be able to see more of the baby's face um, so it's all about those angles and those supports but get your safe shot this would be my safe shot and then I'd come in and I'd just put a little support at the back of the baby's head and then turn it to bring that face up towards the ceiling um, everything that I've talked about in this critique I mention step by step in all of my tutorials every single tutorial um, I talk about the reasons why I move something here or I do this and it's so um, hard to remember everything when we're doing the shoot. I get that. I often forget a lot of things myself because <laughs> we can be rushing and, and so forth. But yeah, oh, here we go. Um, love the, did you place the soft box above the bean bag, not 45 as taught in your lighting class? Are we talking about this here? Yeah. Ah, so this is just, just the direction. The, the angle that it was at, I think, was just really high. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> 
don't always go off this and it's always going to be very different from the angle that I look at it looking at it here from what the camera angle over there is going to be looking at it so at the moment where you pose a baby let's bring this baby in all right so obviously if our baby baby's head was upright like this and I'm not talking about having the light on a 45 degree angle towards my posing bag or towards the baby I'm talking about having your light on a 45 degree angle to the baby's face so how you pose a baby on the posing bag will depend on where your light needs to be so if the baby's face was here like this now the lights at an, a 90 degree angle but if the baby's posed and the face is slightly going towards the light it's now on a 45 degree angle all right if you're posing the baby let's move the liquid so I don't ruin another laptop now if the baby is on its side on a posing bag and my light source is up in that direction obviously if the baby's posed like this the light's going to come straight down top of the baby's head and it's not going to light so then we pose the baby and we bring the baby's face up on a 45 degree angle towards the light source so what we're looking at is not just where we put a light or a softbox we're looking at how we pose a baby towards the light when we put a baby inside a prop we have to look at is the prop blocking any of that light coming down across the baby I mentioned it before with the pose it with the round bowl and the baby being quite flat in there so you put the baby's bottom down further and you bring the up the upper body up higher so that the light can fall where it needs to fall so it's not just about where you position that light in physically putting it it's how you pose a baby towards that light and how you bring their face up towards that light to get the best light across your subject. Always remember that it's going to be a combination of many things. The position, the pose and the placement. And then you've got to control the intensity of that light as well. There is so much more than just put your light beside your bag here. <laughs> So always look at your shadows. They are going to tell you if you've got your light going in the right direction. All right, yeah. I'm done. I've got 10 amazing images. Thank you to everyone who submitted a photo this month. Uh, we do do it every month. We've I think I've been sharing up until June, so I haven't quite shared the next six months. I have blocked them out in my calendar though, so those new dates will be coming out in an email very, very soon, and they'll be shared in the group, so you can keep an eye out for that. I do them every on a Friday, um, once a month, and the Thursday before that is when I will share the link. So if you didn't quite get a photograph um, uploaded this time, we will do it again oh my god that bit about the 45 degree angle with the head tilted towards the light was the light bulb moment for me awesome <laughs> I love that I love that we all learn differently we some people are visual learners some people love to read and learn some people have to do and learn and that's the thing when you're trying to teach different things some people will need to see it differently but the way that you pose a baby towards your light source um, will make a huge difference. And I think one of our images here today was absolutely perfect. Every element except for the light. So always consider how you use light to create impact, to help lead a viewer's eye throughout your image um, and so forth and to control that light as well. Um, yeah but it's I love doing this I love I could keep going all day but um, we've got some other things obviously that we need to do and I've I've been doing these again for 18 months so you can go back through all the previous image critiques as well you do learn a lot from it I share lots of tips and tricks and I do it because I love seeing you guys grow I love seeing your work just evolve and change I did a throwback Thursday um, the other day and it was interesting because I remembered the shoot very clearly from 2008 and I didn't know what I was doing. Obviously I was you know, very aware of safety and, and I had a lot of common sense when it came to photographing babies. But at the time I didn't 
know a lot. There were no online tutorials. There was no workshops in Australia back then. There was no information out there. It took me probably a good five to six years to really get my work to where I was like, wow, I'm doing good. I see you guys start and then in a couple of months, I'm like, what? <laughs> you guys look like you've been doing this for years. I saw another lady share photos of her very first session. I was blown away at the quality of her work. Honestly, watching you guys grow and achieve the results that you want so quickly is amazing. It is, you should be so proud of yourselves. Like we get really down on ourselves and we think that we're not doing the work at the quality that we want it to be at. We get frustrated, we, we you know, we compare our work to everyone else's and we forget at how far we've come. So always remember, don't compare your work to anyone else. Compare your work to your work, to how far you've come. Uh, what's the etiquette in regard to submitting an image that has been critiqued into a competition? You can enter any of the photographs that you send to me for critique into competition. That's fine. I've judged over the years I've judged at multiple different competitions and I've often had the same image come up in a different competition later on that I've previously judged. It's either been reworked or something's been done and I'm always able to see the difference in that. So I've entered photographs into different competitions and learnt from the feedback that I've received and made the changes and, and it's amazing watching the image evolve and grow to a place where you are so happy with it, but you only do that through feedback. So go for it. Thanks. Absolutely go for it. It is Friday. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Um, we're going to do something else in the, in the group next week. So keep an eye out for information like that. If you're looking for any um, anything to do over the weekend, go to our blog, newbornposing.com. The blog there, every Wednesday we share a new blog post. This week was all about tips for maternity posing and um, you can find a heap of information on there as well. It's all free. If you haven't seen my free safety videos, watch those. Um, remember when you are sharing things here in the group, you know, asking for that feedback, asking for that advice. It'll be, you know, just take it on board and, uh, and use it. But yeah, have a great weekend, everyone. I'll see you soon.